Okay, welcome to composition three. Last year, you learned how to write a clear and coherent paragraph. This year, we're going to be practicing different kinds of essays. Um, so last week, we did activity one. I wanted you to try to write as good an essay as you can using all of your resources, all of your tools, and all of the time that uh, was available. This will come in handy when later in the semester we do activity two. Um, so let me introduce you to the Moodle page. Everything you need is on this page. If you need to contact me, you can send an email to this email address. Um, if you click my name on Moodle, it will bring you to my Moodle profile page, and there will be another email. That email does not work. If you want to contact me, please send an email to this address. Um, or you can contact me on Microsoft Teams. Um, okay, I should add a Teams code here. I'll add this later. If you need to join Microsoft Teams and the school has not added you yet, um, I will put a code here and you can add yourself to our class using this code. Okay, here is the syllabus. This is what we're, sorry. This is what we're going to do this semester. Um, I have a, a clearer version of this I'll show you later. But this information is important. Suggestions for learning guidance, come to class, write the essays and you'll do fine. I'll try my best not to fail you because I know that if you fail, you have to take this again and it's very annoying. Textbook, no textbook. I will pass out handouts. And I also posted some resources on Moodle. I will show you later. Grades. This semester, we will write four essays. I will explain in detail later, but first the essay names are exposition, cause effect, comparison contrast, and narrative. Narrative goes first. I'll talk about this later. Each essay is worth 20% of your final grade. Each essay you will write and then rewrite and then maybe rewrite a third time. I will only grade your final draft. So when you first begin to write or you rewrite for the first time, no pressure. There is no score attached. You can try whatever you want as long as the final draft is what you think is the best version of that essay. I will only grade the final draft. And then 20% is a final exam. As you know already, this semester we do not have a coordinated midterm or final exam. The exam will happen in this classroom on week 18. And just like last year, uh, I will give you some options. You choose one uh, topic and you will write an essay about that topic. Um, this semester, the focus will be on integrating AI into English writing. One major um, danger of using AI to write is that over time, you may forget how to write by yourself. So the final exam is designed to encourage you to keep up practice of your own writing skills separate from the computer's help. Um, so week 18, come here, choose a topic, two hours, no help, only your pen and your paper. That's 20%. 
Okay, so now you're thinking, wait, what about the midterm? The midterm will be your first essay. That will be your midterm score. Some of you now are thinking, wait, what about attendance? So if you can write an excellent essay without coming to class, I'm not going to keep you here. But the school does uh, require that you come for at least 12 weeks. Right? If you miss seven weeks, the system will fail you. So that is attendance. Um, if you take sick leave, personal leave, or you just don't come for seven weeks, the system will fail you. That's the only attendance that will appear on your grade. That you the Okay, do you have questions about the grading? Cool. Let me show you the detailed schedule. <clears throat> so week one, activity one, we did that last week. Week two, introduction to the course. I'm doing that right now. Basic grammar and narrative essays. Um, I think I'm going to introduce narrative essays first. And then if we have time, we'll talk about basic grammar. You guys just spent a year taking grammar, right? I'm sure you remember everything. And, and this week, you already have homework. You have to write a narrative essay. Narrative essays are, uh, in Chinese, we call this shi si xing So it's like telling a story, but it's not fiction. It's a kind of essay. Um, as I'm sure you've read in high school, there are many different kinds of essays. This one focuses on storytelling, and I'll introduce the details uh, later today. So go home, write a narrative essay. Next week will be individual conferences. I will meet with each of you one-on-one -on -one to discuss your essay. Uh, now, I know that not everybody is a fast writer. Some people need more time. So next week, you don't have to finish your first draft, but you do have to have a topic and a plan. You have to know what you're going to do. And so we can talk about your idea, talk about your plans, uh, and hopefully that will help you when you Go home next week and revise your narrative essay. Now, week four, you do have to submit your draft. So you have to finish your first draft by week four. In class, I will introduce the next unit, exposition essays. Exposition essays are essays that explain something. They give the reader information. And the homework for week four will be to write or to begin writing an exposition essay. Week five is a holiday, but the school wants us to make up this holiday. Uh, I'll talk about that later. Uh, when we come back week six, we will again enter into one-on-one -on -one conferences to discuss your narrative essay. This time, you have already submitted something, and I will mark that essay. When I mark an essay, I mark line by line. Um, so I will give you that before class, maybe like a few days before class. Uh, take time to read through my marks. And then in class, I will meet with you one on one to discuss anything you don't understand. After you have my feedback, you can then revise your narrative essay into the final draft and then submit that for your midterm grade. Week seven, we will discuss your exposition essay idea and plan. So that's how this goes, right? Each unit is a kind of essay. 
you I introduce it, you write it, we talk about your ideas, you go home and keep writing, you submit, I mark it, you come back, we talk about that draft, and then you go home, rewrite, submit, and I give you a grade. That's how this class works. Um, week eight, submit the your draft of the exposition essay. We're going to watch a movie because it's the week before midterms. I'm sure you're very busy. It's a great time to relax. Week nine, we have to have class, so we're going to do individual conferences about your exposition draft after I have marked them. So after this class, you can begin to submit your exposition essay final draft. Same thing below, cause effect essays. Cause effect essays are a kind of exposition. You are also giving information to your reader, but the specific information is something that has a cause effect relationship. I'll introduce these other uh, essay types um, when we get to the week that says introduction. So again, after I introduce it, begin writing, we talk about your ideas, go back, rewrite, you, uh, you submit your first draft, and then I introduce the next one, comparison contrast, write it, we talk about the draft that I marked of your cause effect essay, go home, rewrite the final draft, and submit it to Moodle. Then we talk about your comparison contrast uh, ideas, you go home, rewrite, come back, submit it to Moodle, and that day we will do activity two. I'm not going to tell you what activity two is. You're going to discover that on week 15. Week 16, we talk about the version of the comparison contrast essay that I have marked. You go home, rewrite, submit to Moodle, I give you a grade. Week 17, January 1st, no class. Week 18, final exam. That's it. You have questions about the schedule. Okay, um, so we need to decide how to make up class on October 9th. Here's the thing, I know you are all very busy. We probably won't find a time where everybody can come to class. So uh, that the, for the make up class, we're just going to watch another movie. I pick some pretty interesting movies. So if you have time, I think you should come and, and watch it. Also, apparently there are people walking around in the hallway to check if a class is actually happening. So like if I'm the only one in the classroom and they come in and ask what's going on, it could be kind of embarrassing. So if you have time, uh, please join me in watching the movie during the makeup class. So. When should we make up that class? I'll give you three choices. Option one, Tuesday afternoon, fifth and sixth periods. She's your duty. Option two, Wednesday afternoon, fifth and sixth periods. She needs that Option three, Friday morning. Third and fourth period. I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it. Okay. If you want option one, Tuesday afternoon, raise your hand. Okay, if you want option two, Wednesday afternoon, raise your hand. Two people. Okay, and if you want option three, Friday morning, raise your hand. Okay, Friday morning. So let's do next Friday. Today is 18th, right? So 17, 15, 15, plus 7, 22, plus 7, November 29th. Oh, Teacher's Day, Jossiji, great. So you all will join me on Teacher's Day to watch a movie, excellent. I will tell you the classroom once I have found one. Uh, September 29th. Oh, yeah, 
Oh, okay, cool. So then the following um, Friday. So that's two, three, four, five, October 6th. This is really helpful. Thank you for reminding me. October 6th is a terrible time to watch. Wait, you guys, do you guys have class Friday afternoon? Yes, okay, so you have to come anyways. Okay, great. Cool. So that's the schedule. Do you have questions about the schedule? Okay. Um, so I already talked about the four kinds of essays we are going to write. I, this is how I'm going to grade them. Here's the thing. AI knows how to use correct English. Its grammar is almost perfect. Its vocabulary is quite expansive. The one thing that AI cannot do is sound like a human. And by that, I mean that uh, when we write an essay, we can divide it into three different aspects. Uh, this idea was first proposed by Aristotle. An essay or any piece of writing or communication should have should consider three aspects. Logos, which is logic, reason. Pathos which is passion, emotion, and ethos, which is ethics, the relationship between author and reader. So logos is what you have been learning for at least one year, maybe longer. How do you come up with good reasons? How do you present those reasons in a persuasive order? Uh, and basically, how do you make your essay sound reasonable, to make it make sense. Pathos, emotion. When you want to tell somebody something, first you have to make them want to hear you, want to listen to you. You can have the best reasons in the world, you can have the most important information, but if they don't want to listen to you, it's useless. Pathos, passion, emotion is how do you make your reader want to read your writing? How do you make them interested? How do you keep them interested? And then also, uh, how do you make them grateful that they have read your writing? Last one. Ethos, relationship between author and reader. Here's the thing. There are so many good pieces of writing. All the information you need is online somewhere. Why should the reader read your writing? What is it that only you can give the reader? Your relationship. So uh, why did you choose this topic? Why do you care about this topic? Why should the reader listen to you about this topic? And why should the reader trust you? This is very important. A lot of information, all of the information is online. A lot of it cannot be trusted. How do you make the reader trust you? So these are the three aspects of each essay that I will look at to give you your grade. Um, so this is a rubric. A rubric in Chinese is ping fen biao Um, Each essay is worth 20% of your final grade. I will give each essay a grade from one to five. So if you translate that, that's four, eight, 12, 16, and 20 points. This is what I will be looking at for each grade point. The best essay, five points or 20%, uh, will have solid reasoning supported by illustrative examples. So your examples have to really show what you're trying to say, really be connected to your point. 
and you will have a persuasive presentation order. So it's not enough to have good reasons. You have to put the reasons together in a way that makes sense and uh, makes the reader, uh, it makes it easy for the reader to follow you and to understand. In terms of emotion, the best essay will powerfully evoke universal human experiences and emotions. So it's not enough to talk about emotions. The best essay will make the reader feel those emotions based on per, uh, human experiences. Finally, in terms of ethos, the best essay will inspire readers' trust in and admiration of the writer. So not only will the reader trust you, they will admire you because of how you have connected the topic to your personal experience and uh, expert knowledge. So this is the best kind of essay. The worst kind of essay, one point, in terms of logos reason, empty slogans with no development. You throw out ideas, you throw out information, but you don't explain anything. And maybe each line means something, but when you put it together, it doesn't mean anything. In terms of emotion, presents ideas with only factual assertions using straightforward sentence structures. So you only care about presenting information. You don't think about how do I use my language to um, make my reader entertained or make them want to listen or make them feel something? You only present information in a very simple and straightforward way. Finally, in terms of ethos, no discernible attempt to manage the reader-writer relationship. When I read your essay, I cannot tell the difference between you and anyone else on earth who is writing this essay. Right? Different people writing the same topic should present different essays, should come up with different things. If I think that your essay could be written by anyone, you will get a very low score. Now, uh, raise your hand if you have used ChatGPT before. Okay, good. Then you will probably recognize that these three points basically describe ChatGPT. So in this course, you must write an essay better than ChatGPT can do. Um, one way to do this is to begin with AI and then make it better. Add things, fix things, rearrange things. So today, when you go home, I want you to create a ChatGPT account and practice using it. Tell it, write me an essay about this topic or ask it questions. Interact with it. Um, become familiar with the voice that ChatGPT uses. I don't smell it cheap. How does it use language? And use that as your Minimum. You have to write an essay that is better than that. Um, so the middle three points, um, grade levels, you can um, go home and read on your own. Basically, it's a spectrum, right? Worst, best, everything in the middle. This is a good time to remind you that you need 60% to pass the course. To put this another way, you only need 60% to pass the course. So I do hope that you can write four perfect essays. But if you don't, I'm not going to be sad. I'm not going to be offended. Um, everybody is busy. Think carefully about what you want to learn in this course, how much effort you want to put into this course. The map is here, but the journey is yours. Okay, do you have questions about the rubric? Okay, 
Um, so let's go back to Moodle. So that was uh, the syllabus, the detailed schedule, and the grading rubric here. What else do we have? Class emails. Um, so if uh, there's important information to give you, I will try to give you that information in class. But sometimes, like last week, important information appears between classes. And in that case, I will post that information here. When I post something, the system will send you an email to your school email account at me.mcu. Now, I know that not everybody looks at your school email account every day. So if you don't have that habit, please come to Moodle from time to time to see if the latest post has changed. Whenever there is a new post, I will change this part. And that way you won't miss anything important. Next, I'm teaching this in English at your request. So uh, I will record every week's lecture. If there is a lecture, I will record it. And then I will upload it to YouTube. And then I will post the link on Moodle somewhere like in the relevant section of the page. And the reason I'm posting it to Moodle, sorry, I'm posting it to YouTube instead of just uploading the video is because YouTube will produce an automatic transcript to Zagal. And you can search the transcript. So if you missed something and you only want to watch one part of the video, you can open the transcript and search for the keyword. And then YouTube will take you to that part of the video. Um, and to learn how to do that, you can watch this uh, video that I made. Uh, next is the grading rubric. We just looked at that. Next, um, when you submit your drafts, no, 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 they're all PDFs. When you submit something to Moodle, you can only submit a PDF file. Um, and when you submit a draft, I ask you to please double space. As I said, I will mark line by line, so I need space. Um, when you write your essay, if you use Google Docs, be careful about the Google Docs error. What is the Google Docs error? What's wrong with this picture? This is Lewis Mountain. How many words are highlighted? Two, but it says five. Because another issue is what is this? This is an S. That's not a word, right? And what is this? It looks like expectations, but the first half is disappeared. In fact, the first half of this word is on the previous line over here. The word has been broken up into two halves. What's going on? The computer thinks that each letter is one word. Right, so this is five letters. It tells you five words. And because each letter is one word, it can break words into two halves with no logic, no warning. This is the Google Docs error. This happens when you write in Google Docs and then you save as Word. So to prevent this problem, one way is after you finish writing in Google Docs, copy and paste. Another way is to use Word to write instead of Google Docs. Um, if you like writing on your phone, our school has a Microsoft 365 account you can apply for, and you can use a mobile version of Microsoft Word. 
我们学校有提供那个微软办公软体的行动版，需要的话。Um, but please try to avoid this kind of error. If this error appears in your draft, I will mark it. If it appears in your final draft, it will take away from your grade. And if it happens to you and you don't know what to do, you don't know how to avoid it, contact me and we can talk about it. Okay, next. Don't cheat. Right? This is the writing class. Uh, some people will think, oh, I can just find something online. Or even I can just ask uh, ChatGPT to write it for me. So first of all, if you ask AI to write your whole essay and you don't change anything, you will get a very low grade for reasons that we have just discussed. If you find something online and you copy and paste it, you will get no grade, zero points. Because that is called plagiarism. In college, we care about more than just money. We also care about knowledge. The whole point to come to school is to learn things. Testing and grading, that those are just to help me make sure that you are learning. If you give me somebody else's work and you pretend that it's yours, I don't know whether you're learning. If you take somebody else's work, pretend that it's yours, and I give you a high grade, you have stolen that grade. If you get if you copy other people's work and get a high grade in this class and you get two credits, you have stolen those two credits. And if you do this and graduate and you get a degree, you have stolen that degree. If you then take that stolen degree to get a job, then you have stolen a job. This is very serious. If I find out you're copying anything and you pretend that it's yours, I will give you a zero on that essay. If somehow you manage to copy during the final exam, I will give you a zero on that exam, even though I will be quite impressed. Um, if you want to learn more about why plagiarism is so serious, this is an essay in Chinese that I found to be quite uh, interesting. So don't copy and pretend that it's yours. You can look for information online, but then you have to tell me where you found that information. And you have to tell me for each piece of information. You cannot simply say at the very end of your essay, oh, here are my sources. You have to tell me each piece of information, where did you find this? Where did you find that? If you only give me your sources at the bottom, I will consider that plagiarism because I can't tell which parts of the work are yours and which parts are other people's. Okay. Okay. Next, this is the PowerPoint that I created for freshmen uh, to give them an idea of what's going on in our department. It also includes some advice about learning English. If you're interested, you can look at that. Uh, and then over the summer, I have been posting um, trivia about English on the department's Facebook page. And I've collected all of that information and put it here if you want to learn more about English and like some special information about English. I do think if you look at these two, it could help uh, with your English ability. Okay, and then this is a reference textbook. We are not going to do this in class, but if you want to improve your writing, you can study this by yourself. This is a book. 
Let me show you this book. It's a very good book. I'm not, not going to just give you a random book. While we wait. Um, so this is activity one. We just did this. This is activity two. You can't see this. I hid this from you. This is the handout. I will pass out the handout later. If you forget to bring your handout, this is the PDF file. Next, this is a OneDrive folder. This is Ring Duan Zhao Jiao. After I finish marking your draft, I will upload your essay here. And I will tell you, I have finished marking them. Please come here to find your essay. It looks like this. This one. It will look like this. Uh, and um, the name of your essay will be your student number. So when I say I have finished marking your essays, go here to find your essay. Next, this is where I will put in your final exam grade. You can't see this right now. Uh, here, I will input your grade here. And this is the final exam. You can't see it, but it's ready. I like teaching to the test. Which you like my calls and tell you. That way, I'm always preparing you. Okay, and then below, this is where you submit your uh, first complete draft for narrative. This is where you submit the final draft, exposition, cause effect, comparison contrast. Um, and for each lecture, I will upload it here. So th today's lecture will he appear here. When I introduce exposition, the lecture will appear here, and so on. At the bottom, there's this thing, bonus assignment. Um, I encourage you to keep track of your score during the semester. I try not to surprise yourself. Uh, so when you're calculating your score, if you think you're not going to pass, you can do this bonus assignment. If you do a successful job, your lowest score will be a passing grade. And now some people might think, oh, the professor said he doesn't want to fail us. So this is just an excuse, right? I can hand in anything and he can say, oh, this student, he works hard. I will let the student pass. No, this is here because if you work hard in this class, you will pass. If you're not going to pass, I want you to work hard on at least one thing in this class, this thing. Um, so it says that you must write 1,000 meaningful words or 2,000 meaningful words in Chinese. Meaningful means that it has to have details and examples and it must be connected to your own experience. So if you write fewer than the required words or it's not very meaningful, I will not give you a passing grade just because you did this. This is an option of last resort. So it's not easy. What you have to do is read this and then write 1,000 words reflecting on your own college life from this same perspective. So what is this? This is 25 pages of psychology from 1968. Uh, 
Um, so some psychologists at Harvard did a study of their students about their experience of four years in college. And this is what they were looking for. And later there will be an example from some students. 25 pages written in the English of 1968. It's not easy. So I hope you can pass this course without doing this. But if you need to, the bonus assignment is right here. Now, this is not a punishment. I'm not making you do this because I'm me. I do think this is a good essay and that if you read it carefully and do the assignment, you will learn something. Uh, and uh, after you're finished, submit it here. Um, and you can only submit a Word file, no PDF, um, because I'm looking at the word count. So be especially careful not to make the Google Docs error. Otherwise, you might think you wrote 1,000 words, but actually it's only 200. Okay, do you have questions about the bonus assignment? Okay, do you have, oh, hang on, the book is finished. Cool, so this is the, the reference textbook. Kind of small, hang on. It has, I think, 12 chapters. Uh, let me briefly give you the idea of each chapter. And if you're interested, uh, each chapter will explain and then it will have practice, uh, it will have examples, and then it will have practice questions. So if you want to study on your own, after you finish the practice questions, uh, you can come to me and we can discuss your answers. Chapter one, what is style? Style is more than correct. Style is all the other things I was just talking about. Logos, pathos, ethos. Chapter two, correctness. But before we get to style, you do have to make sure that your essay is correct. You don't have mistakes related to grammar. You don't have mistakes related to accuracy. Chapter three, actions. The fastest way to make your sentences clear and understandable is to make sure that what you're talking about, sorry, to make sure that your grammar fits what you're talking about. So what is the main action that you're talking about? That action should be your main verb. Same thing for your subject and object. Who are you talking about? What are you talking about? Those things should be your main subject and your main object. Make the grammar match your um, ideas and information. Now, uh, in this course, we will be writing three essays about information. And in that case, the characters are the important information that you're talking about. You can think of that important information as your main character, and you want to uh, bring that character through your essay. So on a sentence by sentence level, you should make sure that your main character is always either the subject or the object. Five, cohesion and coherence. These are two different things. Cohesion means that one sentence follows the, uh, the previous sentence. One sentence after another is connected. Coherence means that when you look at the whole essay, it's talking about the same thing. It's possible to write an essay where one sentence follows another and it's very smooth, right? There, it's easy to read. But by the time you get to the end, you're talking about something completely different from when you started. So both cohesion and coherence are important. Number six, emphasis. Um, there are different ways to emphasize things in English. 
one way, the most common way, is to keep the important information to the end. End your sentence with the thing that you want to emphasize. Another way is to put the important information at the beginning. Hit your reader with the most important thing to make sure they see it. Number seven, motivation. How do you make your reader want to keep reading? Um, now, in this book, it's talking about information. And the idea is when you're presenting new information, try to start with something the reader already knows and then slowly move into something that the reader does not know. And that way the reader will want to keep reading instead of feel you know, confused and want to give up. Number eight, global coherence. This is saying that um, not only on a sentence level or a paragraph level, but your whole essay should be about the same thing. So yes, in one paragraph, you have a topic sentence and every other sentence supports the topic. But in an essay, you have a topic paragraph and every other paragraph should support that first topic paragraph. Number nine, concision. Concision means accurate and short. So you have to be correct, but try to be as brief as possible. English doesn't really care about too much um, like fancy language. English doesn't care about that. English cares that you are clear and easy to understand, and you are economical with your words. So if you already have, try not to repeat information that the reader already knows. Number 10, shape. And number 11, elegance. These two are about longer sentences. How to use balance and parallelism to help your reader understand a longer sentence. You probably won't use these, but they can help you in your literature class when you have to read longer sentences. And number 12 is talking about why style is important. Basically, you can use style to say something other than what you are actually saying. Like uh, when you read like a, a letter from the government or like a letter from a company, sometimes it's impossible to understand. That is intentional. The company doesn't want you to understand. And that's a question of style. OK, let's take a short break.
And before I pass out the handout, I want to emphasize that last point. The ethics of style. How do you imply something? How do you bend an essay to support something or to oppose something? I should say, how do you make somebody feel like you are supporting something when you don't say it? How do you oppose something while pretending to support it? How do you confuse your reader? How do you take your reader for a ride and they don't even know it? These are all using style. Fungu, Kay in Sun, Kay Yo Pian, Kay Siren Kun Ho. And this is why it is important to focus on not just what is your information, but how do you present that information? Um, so you don't have to read the book, but if you do, I encourage you at least to read the last chapter on the ethics of style. Okay, let me pass out the handout. Okay, the pages are not stable because I want you to look at page one and page three at the same time. Uh, and for the next unit, I want you to look at page two and page four at the same time. There we go.
So what is page one and page three? This is a story. Page three is the actual story published in a magazine online. So this is a real writer who wrote a real story. Page one is chat GBT. I asked it to rewrite the story using its own language. I want you to compare these two versions and tell me what is the difference. Um, I will let you know that the differences uh, all show why the human version is better. So if you find there's a difference between the computer version and the human version, the human version is always better. So we're going to use comparison to learn how to improve on AI writing. So grab a few friends, form a small group. I'll give you 20 minutes to compare and find the differences between these two essays.
Okay, so you all have discovered some differences between these two versions. Let's go into more detail. So the first one everyone pointed out is the language. This is ChatGPT, right? Look at this. It says, prepare to part ways. Like we understand what it means, but it's very abstract. How do they prepare? What are they actually doing? Whereas in the human version, it says, as she packs to leave. Very concrete, she's doing something. And in fact, the human version gives us more information. She is the one who is packing, right? In the chat GPT version, it says they. But in the human version, it tells us which one of them is actually going to leave. So uh, abstract language is actually less information. In the same sentence, ChatGPT says he confesses his desire to continue their relationship. Blech. So many syllables. If we think about it, we know what it's saying, but the human version is much clearer. He tells her that he doesn't want it to end. Isn't that a great sentence? Simple, direct, immediately can understand. Uh, so the next point that you brought up is the grammar. Like, yes, both versions have perfect grammar, but we're not talking about right or wrong. We're talking about style, which one is more suitable. For example, let's look at Paragraph three here. He embarks on a trail that meanders through olive and lemon groves, as well as steep vineyards. So uh, olive, garlic, lemon, limo, grove just means like the short plants. And vineyards, this is a grape uh, vine. Um, so lots of plants. Uh, and of course, ChatGPT uses abstract language, right? Of embark. What does embark mean? It just means set off. Okay, and then he goes on a trail. Oh, uh, 步道. How? ChatGPT says he meanders through. To meander means to take your time, relax, go here, go there. But the original, it gives a uh, more concrete language, climbing through. So this tells us that the, the geography is not flat, right? It goes up. In fact, it's the same thing, steep, don't you know? So why would it be meandered? It doesn't fit. Would you meander through a steep area? That doesn't make sense. So the human version says climbs through steep, uh, terraces, terraces, and tea But we're looking at grammar. Look at what ChatGPT does. A and B, comma, as well as C. So it's separating olives and lemons from the vineyards. Why? What is the difference between these plants? The answer is nothing. There's no difference. These are all what he's climbing through. So in the human version, olive and lemon groves and steeply terraced vineyards, A and B and C. Some of you might be thinking, wait, this grammar is wrong. Shouldn't it be A, comma, and B, comma, and C? No, because here, olive and lemon groves, the groves, applies to both olives and lemons. So this is A. This whole thing is A. And this is B. Because vineyards are not groves. So it's A and B. So in fact, ChatGPT uh, gets it uh, less correct. 
or you, there's no reason to separate uh, these two parts using as well as. This is just extra for you. So the grammar is also not suitable to the situation. And then uh, one group also mentioned that chat GPT gives us too much information. For example, here, uh, sorry, uh, here, curiosity peaked, which means he became curious. He asks, why not? Here's the thing. He asks the question, is he curious? Of course he's curious. If he's not curious, why would he ask? So the human writer simply says, why not? It's too much information. The reader already knows. You don't have to repeat. Now, one thing that nobody mentioned is the ending. The story is about some dude who lost his girlfriend and thinks that what he needs is a place to, to live where he can look at the sea. And he thinks that all of his problems will disappear if he gets a view of the sea, a vista del mar, a vista di mare. But the ending of the story is that he doesn't find that place. In fact, the place that he finds looks at the mountains, not at the sea. So the end sentence gives us that information. It looks at the mountains. This is what ChatGPT says. Mountains, responds the waiter. First of all, too much information. There are only two people in this scene. We know it's the waiter. You don't have to tell us again. But secondly, this is the ending of the story. It is the most important part. It is emphasis. So you want to end it on a strong note. One word, mountains. That's the only information that matters at the ending of this story. It, it's the highest moment of symbolism. It's the part of the story where the main character realizes that he's being stupid because fate or his life does not give him a vista de mare, a view of the ocean. So ChatGPT also does not understand emphasis and symbolism. It doesn't understand where to be long, where to be short, where to give more information, where to give less information. All of these things are what human writers add to a story. Questions so far? Okay, so we brought up four principles. Uh, more concrete language, more suitable sentence structure, uh, more concise information, so not giving redundant or repeated information, and paying attention to emphasis, where you should uh, use stronger sentence structures or language, more direct sentence structures. Um, when you go home, if you're interested, you can uh, finish comparing these two essays to, to uh, notice and think about the other differences uh, the other examples of differences. But now I want to talk about the general principles of writing a narrative. A narrative is a story. So you need to know what is your main character or who is your main character. What's going to happen to this person or this thing? Usually, a story will have some kind of struggle or conflict, some problem, something that is uh, making the main character suffer a little, and that the main character wants to try to solve or get around or overcome. So already, you have three points, a beginning, a problem, and a solution. 
It's like a triangle, Sanjashi. So the question is, what shape of triangle do you want? Do you want to slowly build the problem until finally it becomes clear and the protagonist, their main character, finds a way to resolve it quickly and powerfully? Or do you want to present the problem very quickly and then spend more time following the main character as they try to find a way to solve that problem? Either way, you should remember that your reader must be interested in your story. As the main character discovers things or does things, your reader should be interested. But as your main character thinks and waits and feels, how do you interest your reader in that? And usually the best way is to use concrete language, colorful imagery, vivid imagery. When your character is thinking about something, don't say just she was thinking about this. Describe what she's thinking about. To turn it into a small story. When the character is feeling something, don't just say he was feeling sad, he was feeling angry. Try to give an example, right? Uh, he wanted to punch the wall. It's more colorful, more concrete, and it's more interesting for the reader. Now, because this is an essay, it's not a short story. It doesn't have to be real, but it's not a short story. So there should be a reason the reader is reading this. The reason could be it's fun, right? After the reader finishes your essay, they think, oh, that was fun. I'm glad I read the essay. But your essay could also try to to uh, tell the reader something or to show the reader something. Maybe a new kind of feeling, a new kind of idea, a new kind of uh, experience. And you can think about how do I take these new things and present them in a way that makes sense for the reader. And finally, one last point. Language. Usually, uh, when we read, every time we hit the end of a sentence, our brain will think back to what we just read. So in the middle of a sentence, we are always looking at the next thing. Only when we get to the end of a sentence do we think back on the whole sentence. So if you want your pacing to pick up, Use shorter sentences. But if you want your reader to slow down and really immerse themselves in the experience of reading, then you can make your sentences long. And you can think about where in your essay you want to be faster and where you want to slow down and give more description and information. Now, uh, my general advice for writing is write something you care about. In this class, I will not tell you what to write. You choose your own topic. So choose something that you care about. If you choose something that even you think is boring, your essay will be boring, I will be bored, and your grade will also not be very high. If you choose something that you care about, that you want to tell the reader, you want to share with the reader, then you will naturally use more direct language, more persuasive language, more colorful language, because you want the reader to really get it. Those are the best kinds of essay. So choose your own topic, and uh, remember that the point is not to find the perfect topic, the point is not to write the perfect essay, but to write a good essay on a topic that you choose. The hardest part of writing is the first word. 
So choose something and then start writing. And we can always make it better after discussing it in class or after I look at it and mark it and return it to you. Questions? Okay, so homework. Go home, start writing your essay. You don't have to finish, but you do have to have a topic and a plan. You have to know what you're going to do, basically. If you do finish, that's great. Uh, you, you don't finish, at least bring your ideas. And next week, I will meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. When I am talking with somebody and you are sitting in the classroom, that is your time to keep working on your essay. I know everybody's busy. If I tell you, go home, write an essay every week, you're not going to finish. So I'll give you some time in class. Okay, that's it. See you next week.